rainy morning can't dampen the glitter of the Golden Dome, the iconic landmark at the center of the University of Notre Dame. Fall colors have arrived and so has the rain. A wet 24 hour stretch here in South Bend. How much will it impact what was anticipated on being a very fast track? We're about to find out. Welcome to the ACC cross country championships. North Carolina State has dominated. They have won five consecutive crowns for head coach Lori Hennis. No reason to believe they can't capture number six. Some of the programs looking to make a big move up the chart. Miami, keep an eye on them. And then let's not forget the running renaissance that has started at North Carolina. They are believing a very young and talented group. And a pleasant good morning, Sean Kenny, alongside longtime Duke track and field coach Norm Ogilvie. Great to have you with us. Championship season is finally here, and you look at this women's field, it is loaded. A lot of depth. The question becomes, though, has anybody closed the gap with North Carolina State? I really don't think so. NC State is the dominant program, one of the best in the entire country. They have some great competition, but state is in a class by themselves yeah you take a look at what they have been able to do they have captured nine championships since 2000 they have won five in a row and they quite frankly just destroyed the field a year ago and they're trying for number six here in just a few moments the big weapon for them is the defending champion. Dominique Claremont is back for North Carolina State. And this is a, a runner that's hoping to make a triumphant return today. It was nearly four weeks ago that she was on this course and she took a pretty bad fall. So this is her first time back in action. What can we expect? Well, it's a good question. Uh, she's had a tough time since she won her last championship. She had mono in the spring and then she had some injuries this summer. And then she had the fall uh, back on October 1st on this very course. So she has the talent to still do real damage out there. The good news is there's not a ton of pressure on her because her teammates are so strong that the Wolfpack can survive an, even just an okay day from Dominique. Yeah, she really shredded the field to a tune of 11 seconds last year. Can she do it again? Amanda Vestry was chasing her a year ago. She's had such an incredible outdoor track season. She's followed that up with a strong fall. Syracuse thinks she has taken the steps to make the next step for her. Absolutely. She was a good runner at Iowa State. She was, she's become a great runner under coach Brian Bell at Syracuse. And her ACC outdoor 5,000 meter title uh, gives even further credentials to, to we know she's going to be near the top. It's going to be a lot of fun. So many different storylines intertwining today. Remember, the top 21 earn all ACC honors, while on the team side, several schools feel they have the depth to contend for an ACC title. All the drama just moments away from a wet morning in South Bend. The wind has picked up just a little bit here in the past half hour or so. Plenty of rain, overcast skies in South Bend, moments away from the start of the ACC cross country championships. This conference certainly has emerged as one of the elite conferences in all of women's cross country. Five ranked teams this postseason, headlined by North Carolina State. Bob Raymond back behind the Florida State Orchestra trying to rally the Knowles. He feels they have enough depth to contend for a title. And then obviously North Carolina, Syracuse and Notre Dame all with hopes of qualifying for the NCAAs. Well, Notre Dame certainly has the advantage. They are familiar with this course. You take a look at the Burke Golf Course. It's built a reputation of being flat and fast. Norm, you've run here, you've coached here. What can they expect today? Well, they can expect the need to get out fast. The course, only a couple hard, hundred yards in, makes a sharp right turn. And if you don't get out, you can get buried and, and have trouble moving up in the field the rest of the way. The course narrows down pretty quickly in that second mile. And uh, while it is flat, there are also some potholes out in the course and, and they fill up with water when it rains all night before. And uh, it can get sloppy out there. Well, some of the women are certainly excited with the flatness of the course, but they know it's a challenge and they know the start is gonna be critical. NCAAs last year is completely different. Um, the Oklahoma course was a grinder for sure, um, and this course is extremely flat. 
and it's fast, kind of like a track race. Well, it'll start incredibly quickly, I think, uh, and then it's flat as a pancake. Hills are kind of a, they, sometimes they level the playing field between people who are more distance oriented and the mid-D folks in the race, so there's none of that. <laughs> um, so it'll be, I think it'll be important to stay locked in and focused throughout the whole race, especially on some of these long stretches. The entire time you're gonna just need to be pushing because there's no point of, there's no part that you can just like get ahead because of the hill or the downhill, so you just gotta like stay focused the whole time. Just expecting a fast pace <laughs> the whole time um, and not really changing rhythm throughout. It's just gonna be fast the whole time. <laughs> Georgia Tech had such a strong postseason last year. They finished a program best second at these ACCs, and their big weapon is back. The 10,000-meter ACC champ, Nicole Feagans, ready to lead. Feagans is uh, a true Georgia peach. She's a native of Douglasville, and she had her first big, big breakthrough, ironically, right here in South Bend uh, when she won the indoor 3,000 meters for the ACC. And as you said, she also won the 10,000. So if you take a 3,000 meter speed, 10,000 meter strength, that can really pay off at that perfect in between distance of 6,000 meters that we're racing today. It's gonna to be fun to keep an eye on Feagans to see what she can do for Georgia Tech. We all know what North Carolina State has done and they are hoping to continue to dominate. A good look at the Wolfpack runners as they are lined up and Lori Hennis knows the right formula. She knows the right buttons to push and she says racing is a celebration of our training, something that Raleigh Geiger implemented with this program so many years ago. The pack have it going and they continue to uh, recruit really well. Uh, you know, their talent is amazing. You have uh, uh, some, uh, one of the most, uh, one of the most acclaimed high school runners ever, Caitlin sure, Tui, just joined the together. pack. And uh, they have Hannah Steelman, who's a transfer from Wofford. So they're getting him from all over the place. Uh, she's a multiple All-American. And then there's also the four-time All-America, Kelsey Chimmel. And, uh, you know, they have so much depth that that's what makes them so scary, is that, you know, even if somebody has a bad day, there's three or four others to step up. You saw the weather, 54 degrees, cool and wet. Right now, though, the rain has stopped, so that's the good news. Gun up in the air. Runners into position. And we are underway. This is Look at the sprint and the quick start, pivotal in this race today. This is the moment when you're a runner that your heart kind of leaps out of your chest. And then you pull it back in, and, and now the adrenaline's flowing, and you know you have to get out because it narrows down really quickly. Here's that very first, we're coming up, as you see on the drone shot, we're up to that very first sweeping right turn. And then the course uh, looks, looks to be in pretty good shape right now. The rain has <laughs> temporarily stopped. And there's, there's the massive pack, and you can see there's not much separation here. Just a lot of chaos in the beginning of these races. We saw a couple of runners actually go down, uh, and that's typical with the cross-country race. Take us through the positioning. It, it really is a tug of war physically in these opening meters as runners get to their comfortable spots. Yeah, and you have to keep your composure because there's only a certain amount of people that can fit at the front. So if you if you Here get stuck, come. you know you, there is time, but you have to keep your composure. You can't you can't like then surge to the front because that's inefficient too. It's like uh, you know if you're you're driving a car and you, you hit the gas, all of a sudden you're going to expend more fuel in a hurry. So you don't want to do that. You want to just keep your composure. As we see, all the schools now are uh, right on our camera truck, and uh, there there's a beautiful shot of our field. Uh, Notre Dame up at the front there, and Wake. We have some Florida State runners. NC State is actually not right at the front, so they're, they're either got out not as well as they liked or uh, they're just being a little more conservative. But that won't last for long. Yeah, different strategies coming in. Lori Hennis told us she wanted to see her Wolfpack runners try to get out to that first turn with the lead, while Brian Bell at Syracuse really wasn't so much concerned about the start. He said the, the course is going to take its toll, and he just wants his runners to run their normal race. Not a lot of scouting going in for the Orange as they come into these ACC championships, and that formula has worked for him the past couple of years. Yes, it has. And, uh, you know, Notre Dame, it's their home course, and you can see three, uh, three of the Notre Dame runners in green right up at the top early. 
can probably feel comfortable with uh, what they're doing. I actually talked with the Notre Dame women's coach uh, yesterday, and uh, he said, you know, we do have to run the course because, you know, we, we, we live here, but uh, we don't run it every day. So so they did come out yesterday late after all the other teams had, had seen the course and uh, went over it one more time. Notre Dame with some talented runners. Maddie Denner is a senior. They're hoping that she can earn the All-ACC accolade this year. Olivia Markazic, a junior out of uh, Woodenville, Washington from the Pacific Northwest. She is very talented as well. The graduate from the Bear Creek School. A couple of runners to keep an eye on for the Fighting Irish. And when you look at somebody like Denner who has a lot of experience, an All-ACC performer last year at these championships. She plays 17th and then she turned right around and earned an All-American distinction in the 5,000 meters. And, and that's something, Norm, we got to keep in mind. We are back into a normal cycle right now, but that necessarily hasn't been the case over the past 12 months. The ACC's taking place last October, and then we had the NCAA cross-country championships conflicting with the indoor season. So for a lot of these runners, there still hasn't been that, that full calendar year of a routine. That's right. It's It's been... It's been mixed up, especially for the really talented ones last March who did the NCAA indoor meet, uh, indoor track and field meet, and then ran the uh, NCAA cross country championships like a day later. Very, very tough thing to do. But, but you know, time after a, a summer off, you know, things settle in a little bit. And then you've got, you know, other individuals who actually had to deal with uh, late, late spring seasons with the Olympic trials and, and the Olympic games. Uh, at the early, the very first split time, uh, we see Notre Dame uh, in the lead ahead of NC State, and we'll be coming up uh, our, our, in our next indication of, of the team race uh, uh, on the on the scoreboard. will come at 2K. Right now, we're we're still not even at the mile yet, but this this pack, as you can see, is starting to split up uh, a little bit. It's uh, probably a pack of 50 athletes up in the front, and then and then it, it breaks off just a little bit. These are the real contenders up here. And there you see uh, a UNC runner now st sticking her nose into it. And, uh, and and now I see some more red and white of the wolf pack. So yeah, the, the, the contenders are starting to assert themselves. Yeah, it was Jocelyn Long for Notre Dame leading the pack for a while, the senior from Barrington, Illinois, and a couple of Florida State Seminoles running right along the inside stripe. Lauren Ryan, good to see her back healthy, running for Coach Bob Brayman, the senior from Brighton, Australia. And Florida State has that Australia connection in women's track and field and cross country as they have a couple of uh, Australians represented on their roster, both very talented when you look at what Lauren Ryan has been able to do. And then Madi Skyring, who is running today as well. Yes, Florida State uh, puts it together however they need to. And, uh, you know, Brayman, uh, Bob Brayman, the, the head coach, uh, who had just been coaching the men in cross country the last few years, he decided to take over the reins of the women's program this year just because he feels this squad has so much potential. And uh, so far, they, they have uh, shown that during the regular season, and that's how they've earned that 10th and uh, number 10 uh, national ranking. Uh, as you notice, when, in, 800 yards back, we just saw some coaches out there on the, on the course. I think the coaches like to go where the spectators are not so they can be heard. And and then we just recently went past the main spectator area and it got crowded and now we're back out uh, in a more empty area. And, uh, you know, Brayman's always felt uh, that, uh, you know, you have to practice as intensely as you race. And, and uh, here we, have, we see his quote, you need to match the intensity of the race. And uh, he's, he's, he's one of these loud coaches that likes to come out and really let the runners, uh, you know, know what he wants them to accomplish. He's not afraid to, uh, to speak up, but he's also a very uh, positive motivator too. So his, his, his in-race in, in uh, rantings tend to be on the positive side. You start to see some new names pop up near the front. Kelsey Harrington, at the start of the broadcast for North Carolina, we talked about this running renaissance as far as long distance that's taking place in Chapel Hill and what a job that they have uh, been able to do over the past couple of years in their recruiting. And a couple of Tar Heels, a couple of young Tar Heels sitting third and fourth right now when you factor in Kelsey Harrington, the sophomore, and then the very talented true freshman, Bryn Brown, who they brought in 
from Denton, Texas. She never once stepped foot on campus, but she built the relationship with the coaches uh, via the Zoom calls during the COVID pandemic. Uh, it's all about building relationships for North Carolina. They certainly have built one with Brown, who uh, simply has all sorts of possibilities for as talented as she is. Yes, and it's paying off for North Carolina as we see that the 2K splits are in and State is now established the lead. They have 50 points, but North Carolina is sitting in second right now with 68. Florida State in that third position with 95 points and the home team Notre Dame in fourth. So uh, some pretty uh, significant uh, movement there by NC State between, say, the 800-meter mark and the 2K mark. Yeah, through 2K, NC State, your early leader, North Carolina behind Brown and Harrington sitting second, Florida State third, and then Notre Dame, Syracuse, and Boston College right now, your top six through the opening 2K. Yeah, and that's, that's a nice uh, uh, placing for Boston College this early in the race. Uh, it's good to see uh, Lauren White leading that team. Uh, she's a graduate student for the Eagles, uh, but she has some uh, good credentials. She was uh, eighth place in this race last year. She's a two-time All-ACC performer. And she placed 62nd in the NCA race as well. Uh, now we're heading back again to an area where we see a lot more parents and fans. Uh, seems like we have a pretty good turnout for a Friday morning uh, in the middle of uh, football season here. It's good to see. Speaking of the middle, right smack dab in the center is Florida State senior Lauren Ryan. And, and you talk about a wild 12-month stretch. That certainly has been it for Ryan. She just recently returned to Tallahassee as she went back home to Brighton, Australia during the pandemic. So she returned back to Australia. The country shut down, as we know. She wasn't able to come back. So she arrived in Tallahassee in the late spring. The coaches did not want to rush her back into the outdoor track season, so they held her out. And, uh, you know, you look at what some of the times that she was putting in in practice and the great Ellie Hennis who won the national title for NC State. Her times are right around Hennis. So they they knew this could be a special year for Ryan and she's looking strong. Your leader for Florida State in the uh, black there smack dab in the center. Yeah, it's Ryan and Steelman of NC State right now seem to sort of dictate the pace. But uh, I mean, it's still a really tight pack. You've got at least 25 runners there all mixing up. Three UNC runners right at the top uh, in, in, in the uh, North Carolina blue and dark blue jersey. And then uh, you have uh, the, the Notre Dame green runners, the state runners. We see a vestry now up on the far right hand side. She's running right on the line. So Amanda Vestry making her, uh, her surge to the front. So it's it's going to be a competitive race, and uh, we're approaching uh, two miles coming up uh, fairly soon because we're just at uh, 10:28, 10:30 right now. Look at all the Wolfpack runners, and there is Hannah Steelman, just her second year in Raleigh, transferred in from Wofford, where she spent three years. She earned several All SoCon efforts, an NCAA All American as well, and you know she was one of those runners when when we talked to. Lori Hennis, she said she, she was always a better track and field competitor than cross country runner, but something clicked here in the in the last year. And, you know, she had her NCAA race last March in Stillwater. And, and that seemed to be a breakthrough moment for her on the cross country course. Absolutely. And uh, that was one of the toughest courses I've ever seen. And, and I think the coaches all felt like the toughest NCAA course in the last 20 years. And why was that? just because lots of hills and a challenging layout that you had to repeat several times. It, it, was, it was a great spectator course, but uh, tough for the runners, but it was a true test. And, and that's where this, this is a little different. Uh, this is more about uh, speed and getting out and, and competing. Now look, at, now look at the Wolfpack, look at that front. You've got five runners there, all from NC State. They are, they are showing their dominance. Steelman, Tui, and Camille all moving in to that three through five spots. So as expected, NC State with their pack mentality, they are taking care of business early on through the 3.2 split. And then you've got Brown of UNC right there mm -hmm. and uh, Investry also trying to hang on, but uh, you almost have a, a potential for incredibly low score 
on uh, NC State's part. There you see the rest of the of the runners, and there's plenty of them. This is a big moment for all the runners. Uh, you know, the ACC championships is the culmination of a lot of training. A lot of these athletes put in me mega miles all summer long, and it's all geared to getting it done here in October and early November. Uh, most of these runners will be competing in the regional meet in two weeks. Uh, but uh, this is vital, this meet today, to determine the NCAA uh, seeding process. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of movement will happen today. Uh, we won't get into full bracketology, but there's the, the 3.2K split, uh, which is basically two miles dead on. And State now 28 points, with UNC strongly running uh, and, and uh, as we see, some of the, some of the other teams have a, have a bit to make up. Uh, Duke is out poorly. They're having 234 points. Uh, Georgia Tech is uh, is not uh, uh, hurt. The feed running, however, Feeds is running is is not helping them out. Uh, uh, put the points on the board, and we uh, now look at the front. And we see the NC State runners, and it's just NC State and Bryn Brown and Vestry right now with one Notre Dame runner. Just getting started with our ACC championship coverage. Coming up a little bit later on, the men will start. And we had a chance to ask a lot of these athletes for the women, what's it like to have the first race early in the morning? It is awesome. Um, I feel like whenever you watch the men's race, like you can always get some tidbits of like how they, you know, oh, this part was kind of hard or this is where it got a little difficult, especially on hillier courses of knowing when to push. Um, but the, the nerves tend to just settle even more because it's like, man, we could have already been done or they did get longer time to build. So getting to just get out there, race and be done and then go out there and cheer them on is always great. <laughs> I'm kind of glad that we're first. I definitely like to be done with my race so I can cheer on the guys team. Yeah, I, I'm definitely excited to go first, mostly because we love cheering on the guys when we're finished racing. Um, but yeah, hopefully the, the course isn't too messed up for the men, um, but we'll be out there cheering them on. So we're excited. And a lot of the men right now cheering on Amanda Vestry of Syracuse. She's fallen back a little bit and that's thanks in large part to the surge by North Carolina State. Kelsey Camille, the junior from Sarasota Springs, the four-time NCAA All-American, four-time All-ACC performer. She is on the left side of your screen. You have Hayes in there as well, along with Caitlin Tuohy. So NC State getting the job done. And, and, and what's interesting, Norm, is you don't see Dominique Claremont, the reigning ACC champion right now, among their leaders. That's how deep this team is. They are incredibly deep. You've got four NC State runners and Vestry. That's your top five right now. And uh, they, they are getting some separation, as you can see. Uh, in fact, uh, putting putting a little bit of distance uh, from from everybody. I mean, they are they are moving away. Uh, Vestry doesn't seem to want to give up. But look at that, four abreast for the NC State Wolfpack. Quite impressive. So if you're Vestry, you feel like you're on an island a little bit. You're you're outgunned as far as numbers with NC State. What's the mindset? What did you tell your athlete when you're representing your school as an individual way out in front and you're matched up against two, three, and in this case, four Wolfpack runners? Well, I don't think it's it's such a, a big deal because, you know, when you're in a cross-country race period, you're going to be matched up against a whole bunch of runners that, that aren't on your team. So I don't think she's she's too worried about that. Uh, I don't see uh, and, you know them resorting to uh, team tactics uh, to to elbow her out of the way or anything. Right now she's determined. I mean I think in Vestry's head she still still thinks she can win. You know so so I think that's what she's focused on just staying staying with the pack, trying to let these NC State runners help her. You know and that's the mindset you got to take I think is that okay, you know I'm 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 very experienced. You know I mean Vestry has more experience than some of these Wolfpack runners. Uh, so so she, she's certainly uh, in this thing like we thought she would be. Vestry, a two-time All-ACC performer, placed ninth a couple of years ago, was the runner-up last year. She's qualified for the NCAAs three different times, coming off a 5,000-meter ACC title in the track and field season. And this is a runner who, who made the switch. She started her career at Iowa State in Ames, spent two years with the Cyclones, where she was an All-American, a Team USA competitor, all Big 12 selection. And she has improved her racing tactics and has found a home in Syracuse and just continues to grow. And the question becomes, can she bring an ACC title to Brian Bell? We 
We will see it. And as we've just said that, uh, we, she's dropped off a little bit. So now we've got the, the two state runners, uh, uh, Tui hanging right in there uh, with Jamel and then, uh, and then Vestry. And then uh, the fourth and fifth state runners have uh, broken off a bit from, uh, from Vestry. So, so we are seeing some movement now. And as, as that is noted, we have the three mile splits in 4.8K is approximately three miles. And State now has 20 points, North Carolina with 80, Syracuse with 89. So it's tight. You're continuing to see the stroll on the left-hand side of the individuals right now. Feegans of Georgia Tech, a name to keep an eye on. She's currently sitting in the number eight spot. But for the rest of the pack, the concerning look is NC State in their top two starting to pull away from the field a little bit. And Camille continues to get the job done. She's your leader. Tui in the number two spot. And then Vestry sitting a distant third as the two Wolfpack runners, Camille the junior and Tui the youngster who just had such an impressive accolade of accomplishments in her high school time sitting second. Look at Camille go to her arms. I mean, she is, she is lifting her knees, driving her arms. Tui looks much more under control. She, I think she just glanced at her watch. Uh, but uh, we're, we're, coming, we're coming down to the stretch. Here comes Vestry with a big move on the outside. But, it, but it's obviously Camille's gonna power away to, to take this thing, it looks like. And uh, then there's a, way, uh, a little bit of a gap to uh, uh, UNC's Brown and the rest of the field. Here comes Camille. So Camille continues to lead. Take us through the home stretch here. We just hit the 4.8 mark as they finish up this 6K. What are you looking for signs from uh, Camille as she continues to open up her lead? Yeah, I mean, Jamil knows this is hers. She's gonna win this ACC race. She, look at, she just continues to put distance. I mean, it's an impressive look at that drive she has. She, she's just pumping her arms, lifting her knees. Really, really impressive. This, this is going to be her ACC title for the Wolfpack. Uh, not too much more to go. I mean, she's, she look, there's the finish line. So it looks like she's going to be uh, ducking under 20 minutes. Very impressive. Kelsey Camille, the final few meters as she sprints her way home. North Carolina State last year it was Dominique Claremont. This year, the junior from Sarasota Springs, the New York native, comfortably crossing the line. She is your 2021 ACC champion. And another New Yorker is going to take second. And it's going to be Caitlin Tui. There she is. Just 2010-ish. And Vestry gets third. So bronze medal for Amanda Vestry. So a little bit of New York there in the top three. And now the rest of the Wolfpack. North Carolina State four. Hayes will come in number five. North Carolina, the team runner up. Here come the first barrage of Tar Heels. They'll cross six and seven as the rest of the field starts to slide in. Camille wins the ACC title. 20 minutes, 2.7 her time. Tui second for the time of 2009.90. And then Vestry, Steelman, Hayes, and the freshman from North Carolina. Bryn Brown. Here we see runner falling from exhaustion into the finish line. And uh, here's, here's Reinhardt of Duke. Uh, anyway, quick, uh, Syracuse uh, with, with the third, and then their next runner is way back in 19th. But they follow that up with a 20th. It'll be interesting to see how these team scores uh, sort out. It looks like North Carolina is gonna be the, the runner up here. But uh, we'll have to wait for all those scores to come in. Looks like maybe 19 points for the Wolfpack, 61 for Carolina, and 72 for Florida State. So it looks like Florida State got just, well, it's really tight between Florida State and Syracuse right now for that third position. We talked to Lori Hennis this week, the head coach for the North Carolina State women, and she talked about the different trains and the peaking for her team. and. Clearly the way they train is is like everybody else. This is the go time when you hit the postseason. Now, when you look at North Carolina State, they're gonna have the advantage maybe they won't have to run as hard at regionals. So if there's a time they maybe wanna put the brakes on and get these bodies healed for the run at nationals, they're gonna have that opportunity. But again, 
NC State just shows so, just no signs of slowing down. We posed the question to you at the start, would the gap close? You said no, and we just saw it certainly has not. It has not closed, and uh, you know, Talent just wins, but you can see you see Lori Hennis there with a huge smile on her face. She she knows her her look at that. She knows her team just nailed it today, knocked it out of the park. I mean, these other runners are really good. These are some of the best runners in America, uh, and and uh, they they just put a clinic on. A 19 points in, or 21 points perhaps in the ACC meet. Uh, very very dominating performance. We will hear from the ACC champion, all smiles for the Wolfpack. Hugs of celebration, Kelsey Camille, your 2021 women's cross country champion. We'll get her thoughts. On for the sixth straight year, North Carolina State wins the ACC women's championship. And for the third consecutive year, Kelsey Camille is an all ACC performer, but for the first time, she is an ACC champion. Kelsey, first off, congratulations. What a race today for you and your Wolfpack runners. Take us through the conditions. What was it like out there after a wet 24-hour stretch? Uh, yeah, the conditions actually weren't too bad. Um, I think we were expecting it to be raining during the race, so it's nice that we caught a little break here. So take us through the start. When, you, when you're jockeying for position, how physical is it, and what was the strategy, especially trying to get to the first turn here? Uh, yeah, the strategy for us is always just to try to get out hard, um, not get right to the front, but definitely be in the front pack. Uh, I don't think it was too physical today. It didn't look like there were any falls or anything. You know, you, you look at your trajectory and how you have performed throughout your career. What has been the key for you to get to this moment and bring home an ACC championship back to Raleigh? Um, I think the key over the years is really just teamwork. Um, I think you can see throughout the race today that we were really working together, especially over that last like mile or so. It was just all of us, so just trying to move up together, and I think that plays a really big role in our success. Hey, Kelsey, Norm Ogilvy, uh, what was your what was your feeling when when you knew it was just you and Caitlin out there alone? What made you decide to put the hammer down at the end? Um, yeah, I saw pretty much only a wolf pack around, so I figured um, we could just try to pick it up and, you know, shake off some of the competitors. And then Caitlin obviously really pushes me, and I was just hoping we could move up together over the last K, and just knowing that she was right behind me really helped me. Well, congratulations. What a performance. What a full season it has been for you. We'll let you go enjoy it. Thank you. North Carolina State. Take a look at this. 20 points. These are official. <laughs> Just an incredible showing by the Wolfpack. North Carolina finishes second. Florida State edges out the orange for third. The men's race moments away as our coverage continues from South Bend. A wet morning in South Bend. A good look at the Burke Golf Course where the women's competition just wrapped up a few moments ago. North Carolina State, an impressive showing as the Wolfpack win the title, just 20 points for NC State. Here's our college football lineup tomorrow, all right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app, fresh off their win over Clemson. Number 17 Pitt sits atop the Coastal Division. They'll head to Miami to start us off at 12 noon Eastern. Then number 13 undefeated. How's that sound? Wake Forest. The Demon Deacons lead the Atlantic. They take on Duke in Winston-Salem. And the day's capped off by our ACC Network primetime matchup presented by Geico. Quarterback Devin Leary and NC State host dual threat quarterback Malik Cunningham and Louisville. It's all part of our triple header coming up tomorrow right here on the ACC Network. Men's competition coming up in just a little bit. Cross country as far as the postseason goes, the regionals November 12th. And then we have the NCAA championships on November 20th, and coverage will be provided on ESPNU for the championships on the 20th. So a busy stretch. The fall championship season is officially here. And a couple of dates to keep in mind as we move into the month of November. North Carolina State, once again, your team champion, Lori Hennison Company, winning their sixth consecutive title. 
NC State blowing away the field. North Carolina, Florida State, Syracuse, and Notre Dame, your top five in this year's edition of the ACC Championships. Well, a few umbrellas out, but it could be a lot worse, especially over the last 24 hours. The rain has certainly eased the women's competition in, and now we get set for the men's race coming up at the uh, top of the hour. The men getting loose, getting ready to go. Once again, welcome back to South Bend. Sean Kenny joined by a very special guest. Commissioner Jim Phillips joins us, and what an honor. Great to have you with us here at these cross-country championships. The fall sports season, the championship year is underway. Alive and well. Appreciate you and Norm doing such a great job for us with the women's race, and we'll look forward to the men's race here in a bit. But there's a, there's a beautiful moment at the start of the 21-22 season when you can kick off your championship season with a wonderful race that we just witnessed and then obviously another one to come. But how about these student athletes? Are they the best? What they have been able to overcome over the past calendar year, just amazing. And you see their individual performances like what we just witnessed with the women. And this has to be fun for you because you have a little track background. You you love this sport, so it's fun for you to get out, I'm sure, and witness it. It really is. and. Um, I think that's an overstatement about my background. I have a family that, that's much better runners than I ever <laughs> have been, but it is exciting. And, um, you know, this, this heart of our championship season begins in the fall. Uh, we're here today. Next week, we'll go up to Syracuse and see field hockey on Sunday, women's soccer. The following week, we'll have men's soccer and so on and so forth. So, again, the best and brightest student athletes in the country represent the ACC. One thing I've noticed since you took over back in February, you have hit the ground running. You have been all over, no short of travels. Take us through this this first cycle for you as the commissioner. What's it been like? Well, I think one of the, the, the initiatives that you have in this role is you serve the membership, and if you're going to serve the student athletes and coaches, you better go out and see them and get the, get on campuses. And so that's what I have done in the spring and have, have continued here in the fall. I think 17 games in nine weeks or so, and then going to make, make every uh, opportunity to get every to every one of our championships here in the fall, winter, and spring. So you get a chance to get with the student athletes, coaches. You also have a chance to interact with the CEOs, the presidents, chancellors, and get a real good feel of what's happening locally at each of the 15 members that we have, but also collectively what's happening in the ACC. And, and I think that leads us to a chance to, to really kind of push college athletics forward in a way that the ACC is comfortable with, this great balance of top-level academics uh, along with competitive championship uh, types of programs. And I think the balance in the ACC is as good as anywhere in the country. You know, you mentioned the future, and, and let's look back a little bit and at the same time reflect and look what's coming ahead. The ACC Network, back in August, we kicked off year number three. What's it meant from your chair, the impact this network has had and, and where it can go in the future, kind of carrying over to what you just described and building this conference to even newer heights? There's a couple things that will kind of create our destination in the future of the ACC. One is the network. We, we have the very best partner you can with ESPN that have come together and, and launched the ACC network. That is 100% credit of our you know, amazing commissioner John Swafford and his vision and the legacy that he's left for all of us. But the network itself has a chance to showcase 27 programs across the ACC, 28 when Clemson adds women's gymnastics in 2022, nearly 10,000 student athletes and tells a story of what I just described, high academics, high athletics. We have a great relationship with our folks at ESPN and Disney. Jimmy Pataro and Burke Magnus have been terrific partners. And as you mentioned, Sean, it, we're really early in the infancy of this network. It's, it's barely two years old and we're just getting started. So the future certainly is bright. Well, we certainly look forward to moving forward together. Thank you very much for stopping by. We love having you at the championships. Appreciate it, Sean. Go ACC. ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips here from South Bend. We'll have more of our coverage coming up. The men getting nice and loose. They are up. North Carolina, one of the teams to keep an eye on. We have seen one team already successfully defend a title. Now the question becomes, will Notre Dame defend theirs? The Fighting Irish getting ready. Moments away from the start of the men's championship that's coming up in just a moment.
Welcome back to South Bend. Again, Sean Kenny alongside Norm Ogilvie. We have a special guest. You know it's a championship event when we get Mark Packer from Packer and Durham with us. Mark, you guys held your show here this morning, bright and early. No fire pit, nothing like that. You are in the elements here in South Bend. How'd it go? It was awesome. I got mud all over me. My wife has already texted me and said, I can't take you anywhere. But you know what? This is the place to be. Wind, cold, slush, great student athletes, incredible. It's my first time ever at an event like this. I can't believe how many people are out here. Man, the student athletes have already put on the show, and I can't wait to see what the men do next. Pack, we all often hear about the uh, chaos in college football. How was the chaos in the first mile of that women's race? It was great. You know, I talked to Carlson earlier today. He said, Pack, here's what you're going to expect, elbows. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm here for a race. He said, there's going to be elbows. It's all about space, getting position, and letting it rip. I was amazed how physical this was. I'm not a runner. I know you find that hard to believe, but it was incredible excitement. Again, the women were awesome. Now it's time for the men to take center stage. Well, Mark, we're getting close to race time. I know you have a spot on a cart leading the pack you need to get to. Thanks for stopping by. Have fun. Yeah, you got it. Dylan's ready to get this thing started, man. We're ready to roll. So as we take a look at the Burke Golf Course, we add on the additional 2K norm compared to the women's six, and now we get ready for the eight. Take us through the biggest difference that these men are getting ready to prepare for? Not a lot of difference, except the course is gonna be a little bit more chewed up uh, with the women having to run on it first. And of course, you know, the extra distance. Uh, but the beginning is exactly the same. Uh, first, the first uh, three miles is, is very similar. And then they just loop around on ground they've already covered. So there's nothing really new uh, or different from the women's race. The big factor again is just the fact that it's gonna be a lot more torn up uh, than the women had and muddier and, and, and they'll, have to, they'll have to, let's look at uh, Florida State. They probably have the individual favorite. Yeah, Adrian Veldskut, a very talented runner. He was the runner up a year ago and he was second to Yard Nagus of Notre Dame. Nagus hasn't run since coming down with the injury prior to the Tokyo Olympics. They weren't sure if he was going to be able to give it a go, but you see Nagus ahead right there, one of the uh, front wall of runners for Notre Dame. So that's a good sign for the Fighting Irish as they look to defend their title from a year ago. Yes, and Adrian should be the, the, the favorite, even though uh, Yarrett is the defending champ, even though Yarrett qualified for the Olympic Games in the 1500 meters. But they're the two big stars. I think it's an interesting choice of uh, shorts for Notre Dame with the all white uh, shorts that won't be white when they uh, come across the finish line. Gunn is uh, just seconds away from firing here, as you see the drone shot of the entire field of 15 teams. Beautiful grounds here at the Burke Golf Course. Still a sea of green mixed in with the fall colors and the backdrop in South Bend. And now we get ready for the men's championship and we are underway. Notre Dame, the defending ch team champion, the Fighting Irish finished as a runner up on the national scene a year ago. A lot of their main players are back. So Notre Dame, one of the favorites, one of two ranked teams on the men's side. So not as many ranked as we saw earlier in the day with the women, but still very good talent. Notre Dame ranked eighth, Florida State in at the number 19 spot, coached by Bob Raymond. And there, there are other teams that can get out very well and improve their lot on the, on, we have a few teams that are just, uh, you know, receiving votes in the polls. Duke would be one of those. And they seem to have gotten out real well here at the start. Uh, getting out the start is so important because, again, the course does narrow down very quickly. And the men, just because, you know, their pace is faster, it, it becomes even more critical uh, in, around this first turn, as you see. Uh, that tree really signifies the, the, the sharp turn. And uh, now, as you can see, a lot, a lot of uh, dark blue Pittsburgh even has some athletes out. And then there's, you see Notre Dame out there, and I see uh, Wake Forest uh, top man, uh, Falcioni also. So it's going to be uh, an interesting uh, next couple of kilometers as, as the field sorts, sorts itself out. 
Zach Faccioni, four wake, a junior from Sydney, Australia. John Hayes just loved his group of runners this year on the men's side. They trained so hard throughout the uh, fall months, and he's confident that they were going to turn in a good performance. But they kind of feed off the energy of Faccioni, who has been the consistent leader for the Demon Deacons, the multiple all ACC performer. Uh, in track and field, both the 3,000 and 5,000 meters, we have enjoyed watching him run throughout his time. And Adrian Feldshut of uh, Florida State has just asserted himself. He's into the top three right now. And he generally likes to take the lead in these races. Uh, he won three individual races this fall already and uh, had a, a credible showdown with Connor Mance of BYU, who's the defending NCAA champion. Uh, in the recent pre-national meet in Tallahassee. Tallahassee, by the way, is where the uh, NCAA Outdoor Championship will be held this year. So, uh, and there's is Adrian now edging into the lead and uh, we'll expect him to be up there. Now I see some Notre Dame in green too. And uh, you gotta think guys like Danny Kilray uh, are gonna be uh, huge for and Jacobs, Dylan Jacobs are going to be huge for Notre Dame. And we'll keep an eye on Beltscoot to see his approach in, in talking with the Florida State veteran coach Bob Brayman. He said, you know, he, he's a guy who likes his space. He, he was joking, he was laughing. He says he just doesn't play well with others, meaning he doesn't like tight quarters. So it's no surprise to see the senior from Cape Town, South Africa, move to the early lead to try to create a little separation and get into his comfort zone. Yeah, as you can see, he's leading by about a full stride on the far outside uh, as they come into the down Michigan Avenue and into the turn here. Uh, and <laughs> hmm. it, it seems like the, uh, the, a lot of runners ran inside the white line right there. Uh, but I think they may have actually uh, moved the course around a little bit to the mud. You see, you can see the mud and how, how much different it looks from uh, when the women ran here on this stretch, uh, you know, an hour ago. Just can't take the turns as hard as you would like. You have to use a little extra caution when planning the feet as you make those turns. And there are numerous curves throughout this course as they weave their way through the beautiful and vibrant autumn colors here in South Bend. Yes, it is. This is what cross country is supposed to look like. You know, with, with, with you look at the oranges and reds and golds and the greens. When, when you have a, a wet track uh, like this, you will change your spike selection and you put in the longest spikes possible. Uh, and since this is grass pretty much the whole way, uh, you know, that's going to hold well. Look at Yared Nagoose is right up there. So Notre Dame is looking super strong early. Dylan Jacobs, the senior, along with Nagoose for Notre Dame, up near the front of the pack. Jacobs is the Illinois pipeline, if you will, to South Bend, Orland Park product. And, and we mention Illinois because they have a couple of Illinois guys who can certainly score points when you factor in Danny Kilray, the senior from LaGrange, and then Jacobs, the senior from Orland Park. That's been quite a combination. Yarin Nagoose gets a lot of attention, but very quietly, Jacobs and Kilray have been so consistent throughout their time here at Notre Dame. Yeah, Sean Carlson, the Notre Dame coach, has done just a, a fantastic job uh, recruiting the Midwest. He's an Illinois native himself, and uh, look what he's done. I mean, he, he, this is, Notre Dame's going to rival uh, the clinic that uh, NC State put on on the women's side earlier this morning. Uh, Florida State sitting currently 1-2 with uh, Veldskut, and we get our first look at the redshirt uh -huh. senior from the Somalian state, Ahmed Muhammad. And this was a guy you kind of said, keep an eye on last night at our pre-production meeting. Uh, he is a transfer. He grew up in Portland, but like Adrian Veldskut, he, he moved in. He joined the program, came all the way from Boise State. So you talk about the two extremes geographically swooping in from the Pacific Northwest and man has he ever found a home in Tallahassee yes yeah Bob Raymond's real high on him and uh, with good reason the only only sad thing is he is not a long-termer in Tallahassee uh, using up his uh, his final eligibility this fall uh, but uh, he is he is right at the front and uh, capable of, uh, of running with Adrian in workouts so watch out and speaking of workouts uh, Adrian by the way for the first time in his career is now training 100 miles a week uh, 
Bob Raymond had kind of held him back in mileage for the first couple of years, but he's thriving now, and they decided to crank up the mileage a little bit. So we see the two Florida State runners and then the two Notre Dame runners uh, splitting them up. So that's your top four is Adrian, two Notre Dame runners, and then uh, Muhammad. And then in fifth place is uh, Yared Nagus. So, you know, despite it being his first race of the season, he looks to be in very good form. Yeah, certainly so. So the 2K splits coming in for the first time and the runners making their way along the curvature uh, just right around the boundary of the Berg Golf Course as they work their way on that back stretch. And Muhammad, let's talk more about the transfer for Florida State. You talk about a training trip. He took Silas Griffith and a couple other runners from the United States, and they went to Ethiopia this past summer. They were visiting family, and they just had a wonderful time. He embarked on a seven-week trip to Ethiopia, uh, Ethiopia to train this summer. Uh, they all returned with fond memories, and they talked about waking up at 6, 6.15 every morning, going on a long run, and then just going out sightseeing in that altitude and just a trip of a lifetime for a couple of his teammates. Taking picnics in the afternoon at 5,000 feet. Yeah. Uh, yes, it, it, uh, it's, it sounds like, it sounded like a fantastic trip. And uh, you know, Bob's, Bob's always been good uh, bringing in elements from uh, all around the world to make it, make it work uh, for him down in Tallahassee. And he's got the titles uh, to prove it. Right now, again, there's a great tight shot of the three Notre Dame runners and the two Florida State runners mixing it up. So let's talk Yarn Nagus a little bit, who's currently sitting right around that, that four or five spot, well within striking distance. The defending cross country champion, the first Notre Dame runner to win the cross country title, but he was in the news, you know, coming off that 1500 meter record setting performance during the indoors and the prelims, might I add. He had all the expectations heading to Tokyo, and then for the very first time in his career, he gets injured. He went home, uh, a tough decision to pull out, but he did not compete in Tokyo. He suffered the, the quad sprain in practice just days before his Olympic debut. So as a coach, as you watch Nagus, first time back competing, what are you looking for coming off an injury like that? Well, I, I mean, I'm sure his injury is, is better now, or, or I know, uh, you know, he wouldn't be out there. Uh, but what you're looking for is, is what are his signs of distress right now. He looks fairly comfortable from what we can see. Uh, you know, this will reveal itself more in, in, the, in the fourth mile. So uh, we're looking, oh, we're just getting a glance for a second of some of the other runners uh, in the pack. Uh, okay, and, and there's, look at that beautiful orange of the fall foliage right there. Some of these, uh, uh, drone shots are obscured by the fall foliage. Now coming out, we see, again, it's Adrian Wilde's shot. And, uh, and then looks like, uh, look at that, Yarrett's moved into third. Yeah, Nagus into the number three spot. And, you know, you really felt for him. We were talking about the story of his decision, the injury, m days before, moments before the Olympic debut. And we had a chance to catch up with him and, and talk about that decision and, and now competing once again here at Notre Dame. Uh, hurtful experience in some other ways, but I'd say it was definitely really fun just kind of like seeing other athletes and just getting a real sense of like, you know, how strong that community is and just kind of hanging out after like, after I found I wasn't racing, you know, it was definitely sad, but it definitely gave me a lot of time to just enjoy what I had left at the Olympics and, you know, make as many friends as I could. And I think I had a really great time doing that. And I think, you know, after my injury and stuff, I really learned just like, you know, nothing's really guaranteed and it's just kind of appreciating what you have, like when you have uh, I remember learning a similar lesson with COVID. I'm sure everyone did. And, you know, this just kind of reminded me that, like, you know, no one's invincible, even if I like to think I am sometimes. And it's just about, um, you know, keeping your pride in check and then, you know, kind of being excited for the moments you have. So that's what makes me so pumped. He always talks about his family being a source of strength for him. He wouldn't be hardworking if he didn't have the strong force of his family pushing him, the son of an Ethiopian refugee. His father, Alam, was in prison for six months, made it out uh, first to Sudan, then he came over to America, one of six children in the family. As you take a look at some of the splits now coming in over the first 3K. 
Notre Dame, your team leader, 25 points. Wake Forest second. Faccioni still headlining the pack. Syracuse sitting third. And so Wake Forest, interestingly, moving into second. Uh, and, and Syracuse with a strong effort in third. The Wolfpack with, with a good early showing. And uh, Tar Heels doing about maybe where we'd expected. Uh, so that's some of, the, some of the early looks at the team race about uh, halfway out. You know, let's talk a little bit of Syracuse cross country. And this is a proud, proud program. And Brian Bell believes relax running is fast running. And he's done an incredible job. He's mentored an NCAA championship cross country team. He's coached uh, Justin Knight, you know, the great cross country runner, a couple of individual titles. And he was hoping that their balance might come through. Joe Dragon, Aiden Tooker, along with J.P. Trojan, the senior. Those are the main weapons that the Orange brought to South Bend. And, and Brian, certainly a very capable coach. He's, uh, he's got a real good one in Joe Dragon. Importantly, though, is uh, the, up in the front, we're seeing uh, for the first time uh, a move being made by Adrian. He's starting to pull away, putting the hammer down right now. Don't forget, every Saturday, the huddle with Jordan Cornette, Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, and Mark Rick get you ready for ACC football. They'll preview the slate of games, keep you updated on all things ACC football. 10 a.m. Eastern right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. The field here of the men's cross-country championship. And... This is uh, on the back side of the course where there aren't quite as many uh, fans present. But again, you see some coaches on the sideline and, and you know, coaches will generally go, uh, go to that area where they can be best heard. And they're cajoling now. Some of these runners we're seeing are probably sixth and seventh men for their respective squads. You can bring 10 to the NC ACC championships and you, know, you only score five. So some of these guys at, at, the, at this stage of the course, you know, they're not battling for too much. But there's our leader. Look at, he's really broken away in the last 800 meters. Adrian Vilchut. Fantastic. Look how relaxed and smooth he is. Those 100 mile weeks are paying off. And then you see Dylan Jacobs, kind of the guy I thought would lead Notre Dame off of his performance at uh, pre-nationals. And then Mohammed right with him. And then he got Nagoose. And a little hard to read uh, read the name, but that's most likely. Uh, I believe it's Kilray. Kilray, yes, Danny Kilray, yep. It's so Beltscoop continues to lead for Florida State. His teammate in the number three spot with Muhammad, Jacobs, Nagoose, Kilray, representing Notre Dame, and then very quietly, Faccioni in in the number six spot for Wake. And they're flying. I mean, look at that split. That's three miles. He's going through in 1347. So, you know, it looks like the course has held up pretty well. We saw some spots in the back where uh, that we just saw Faccioni go by. We saw some spots in the back that were pretty muddy, but here in the main, main stretch of the course, like that grass looks like it's held up pretty well. You see there's a group of about 10 runners, and then there's a big pack. So there's, there's 10 guys that are just breaking away. And then this is where, there's the Syracuse group right there. There's three of them right together. Dragon, Trojan, and Tooker all bundled together for the Orange. But everybody right now chasing that man right there. And that has been a common theme since he made the transfer in from Coastal Carolina. Adrian Veldskut with the lead right now for Florida State. He has just been on a roll this season. He won three races earlier this year. He was the runner-up behind Connor Mance of BYU at the pre-nationals just a week and a half ago where he ran a sub 23 minute 8K. Came in at 22.494. His three wins, the most since 1981. He won here on this course earlier this year at the Notre Dame Invitational. Veltsku clearly the favor coming in. He is your leader on the individual side. Notre Dame though with their pack running with Kilray, with Nagoose, and with Jacobs clearly out in front. A dominating lead more than halfway through. It, it shows how many good runners there are in this conference. When you look at Wake Forest, they have Faccioni running really well in sixth. But then Wake Forest goes all the way back to 19th for their second guy. So, so that is why 
I mean, there's just so many quality runners in that group between 6 and 19 that Wake can actually be in second place with, with uh, only their second man being 19th. The Fighting Irish looking for their third title in the last four years. The only other team over the past six to win it all, you see it, Syracuse. Not enough numbers this year to knock off Notre Dame and the Irish clearly in a position to do that. On the other hand, Syracuse has continued to move up through the pack. They're now sitting in third place, only nine points back a Wake. And my guess is Syracuse will reel in Wake Forest before the end. Look at Adrian just, just cruising down the back stretch. And then the rest, look, he must have 90 meters on the field right now. He's blowing away the field. Jake, Jake second. Muhammad sitting third for Florida State. And then here comes Kilray and Nagoose for Notre Dame with Faccioni a distance six for Wake Forest. But a clear separation from the top six and the rest of the field. All of these runners knew that Notre Dame was the favor coming in. So we asked them, what's it going to take to try to knock off the Fighting Irish here on their home course? It's going to take a big effort, but you know, I really believe in the boys. We've been training super well, um, and I think, you know, it's cross country, so anything can happen. If we all have a good day, then who knows? They're a good squad. Uh, we, I mean, last ACC season, uh, in the fall, we were second to them, so hopefully we're right around the same place, and maybe who knows what can happen any day, so we're, we're by them by the end. Maybe something can happen. Who knows? We're definitely going to need to step it up. Um, I think we're going to need to just go out here and compete and not lose sight of that. Uh, we know this is a fast course, so... You know, staying within ourselves, but also really competing on this course. You know, that we can do it. I think we're not going to change the race plan much else than like it would be anywhere else. Uh, we're just going to do what we do. Yeah, we'll be all right. Joe Dragon, we heard from C.J. Ambrosio from Duke. J.P. Flavin, North Carolina State, all talking strategy to knock off Notre Dame. Right now, not working, and also not working, trying to keep up with this guy from Florida State, Adrian Veldskoot. 17.22 through the first 6K, just a comfortable flow right now for the Seminole. And that comfortable flow has put 10 seconds on Dylan Jacobs, who's one of the best runners in the United States. Uh, quite impressive. Uh, and then Jacobs, uh, just three seconds up on Muhammad. Uh, we have some uh, six, 6K uh, Team score is starting to come in, but we're going to hold off on those just for a bit because not everybody's put their fifth runner across yet. Uh, so I don't, I, would, I think hold on that. We see the aerial view there with uh, Welschut <laughs> uh, pulling away. Yeah, he continues to, to open up the lead. And we talked about his dominance this year. Four ACC Cross Country Performer of the Week honors this year earned by him. That is a school record. His six ACC weekly career honors tied for the most in school history. All this coming since his transfer from the Conway, South Carolina area, Coastal Carolina. And we now we've got enough runners in to uh, show the 6K uh, uh, team standings. And uh, Notre Dame leading with just 30 points. And then, there you go, Syracuse pulling ahead of Wake Forest, as I thought might happen uh, late in the race. North Carolina has moved up as well to, to uh, fourth place. Florida State hanging in there for fifth, but with a 1-3 finish or a 1-4 finish, you know, you would hope uh, they could maybe do a little better. But, uh, but this is about your five runners. Syracuse making the move, Trojan sitting in the number nine spot, Dragon at 13, and then Tooker in the 15th spot. North Carolina with the very talented youngster, Parker Wolf. We haven't talked about him. He's an altitude runner. He can't believe how flat it is as we take a look at the course here. These altitude guys, they come to the Midwest and they run on these flat courses. And I'm sure it's a little bit of a shock, probably a little bit easier than what they're used to. It's not just the flatness, it's the air. There's air to breathe. Uh, you know. It, they, they do have some uh, flat uh, races uh, in the mountain region. Uh, I know when we used to, when I coached at University of Colorado, we would go to Salt Lake City and hold the district race there simply because we already had to deal with the al altitude. Let's run a flat co golf course. But uh, yes, definitely a lot more oxygen to go around. Look how comfortable he is. You know, he's, he's, he's got this one, he knows it, and he's gonna put it in cruise control here. And uh, you know, he knows he's got regionals and, and NCA still to go. The big prize is still out there. But uh, 
he has just done a phenomenal job and he's having an incredible season. He's really built a relationship with Bob Brayman, the director of track and field operations for Florida State. Brayman was joking with us. He said he actually recruited Adrian's brother, <laughs> so he had a good relationship with the Veltscoot family. And then uh, the brother was the star. They weren't sure about Adrian, and then, you know, they held him back a little bit. You mentioned he was up to 100 miles training this year, back to a full load of work, and, and Brayman quickly realized this guy is a stud, and he could bring an NCAA championship to Tallahassee, and clearly if the regular season and today's first test of the postseason is any indicator, he might be on his way after the silver medal a year ago at Nationals. And let's not forget, it's going to be on his home course. So, yes, it would be exciting. Uh, with last uh, ACC runner to win an individual national championship uh, was the Syracuse runner uh, a number of years ago. Uh, yeah, the great Justin, Justin Knight in Knight. 2017. So, uh, but uh, that's certainly within realm, uh, uh, within the wheelhouse of, uh, of Adrian here. Uh, and he's getting, uh, you know, close, close to the finish. It's not too far off now. We took a quick look at the course map just a, a little bit ago, and uh, this is the part uh, that the women didn't run. And it's this final loop that will take him back uh, to the finish, but he, he is not far. We, there's the three-mile mark. He just, oh, excuse me, three-mile mark. Never mind. <laughs> uh, I was looking. He, he will pass the five-mile mark, and we'll see the finish shoot. Here we go. There's the finish line. So he's going to be he's going to be very close to uh, 23 minutes. He ran a sub-23 minute 8K at the pre-nationals less than two weeks ago. The home stretch. Everybody coming over to get a glance of this year's champion. A runner-up a year ago. Not the case this fall. Adrian Veldskut, your ACC champion, 23.08, 23.09 in that area. Here comes Notre Dame in the number two spot. Muhammad with some kick late. He's charging hard. He will finish third. Big fist pump from him. Dylan Jacobs, the runner-up from Notre Dame. Florida State will earn the bronze. And now here comes the rest of the contingency for the Fighting Irish. Kilray, last year's champion, Yard Nagoose across in a time of 23-39. A 16-second win for, for Vilcha at this caliber of running. That is domination. Uh, but again, Jacobs is going to be one of the top finishers at the NSA Championships. So you're seeing some excellence out there this afternoon. I think... If anyone had any doubts about Ahmad Muhammad of Florida State, those have been answered. He was right with Jacobs. He's only one second back. Are you surprised by the separation that Adrian was able to create this year with the field? Yes, because, you know, he's training harder than ever. And, uh, I mean, he's had a fantastic season. But I, I didn't quite think it would be that easy. I, I, I mean, Jacobs has had a fantastic season, too. So this, this is quite revealing. And soon we'll start seeing fifth runners come in and then we'll get accurate reflections on the score. And look at that. Well, you see that, that's, no, that not everybody's in yet. So we're gonna have to wait a little while. And then there you see some, some are just falling in exhaustion. You look at a UNC runner there hanging on to his trainer. Even the runners that are just barely breaking 24 minutes have put in quite a show. And uh, it takes great effort to run uh, sub uh, three minute kilometer pace for 8K. Well, certainly the stage is getting set for the November 20th NCAA Cross Country Championships. The defending champion from BYU, Connor Mance, he was able to outduel Adrian Veldskut a couple of weeks ago. But the Knoll looks prepped and primed and ready to maybe bring back an NCAA title to Tallahassee. For the third time in the last four years, Notre Dame is atop the ACC on the men's side. The Fighting Irish with 32 points. Syracuse second, Wake Forest third. North Carolina, Florida State rounding out the top five. The Seminoles in the number five spot, they were buoyed by their talented senior. The closing moments effortless for Adrian Veldskut. At least that's how he makes it look. Last year's NCAA runner-up across the line in an ACC championship time of 23.07 flat. Adrian, first off, congratulations. 
Bob Raymond told us earlier this week that you like to operate from space. You don't like to have a lot of guys around you, and, and boy, you took it to heart. You opened up the lead and never looked back. Take us through your strategy coming in. First of all, um, besides, uh, I just first of all, I just wanted to come, come out here and perform really well for my team. And um, on an individual level, um, I knew there's a bunch of really, really good guys, guys from um, Notre Dame that I respect quite, that I respect a lot. And I knew if I want to have a chance at winning this title, I had to make it hard from the front. Um, and I just make, made sure the, the race is honest. Um, and from the first 1K, I realized like this is the pace is really good. Um, if we can keep this for at least another 3K, um, I should be good and I will just take off from there or at least try and separate from the pack, which, which um, luckily for me worked out well. So I'm really glad that I could perform well for myself and for my team in FSU. So. Adrian, fantastic job. Norm Ogilvy. Uh, do you, how, how has the 100 mile training weeks uh, been working out for you? Obviously, well, but uh, do, uh, when are you going to tape? When are you going to start to taper? Um, that's, that's really between coach and I, um, I still feel really good with the, with the miles I've been running. Um, I'm really, really comfortable where I'm at right now, hundred miles between 90 and hundred, which is really good for me. And I still get some decent, solid, um, quality workouts in, and I feel really good with it. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly when I want started like focusing right, uh, my focus right at nationals, but, um, that's that's probably from a coach and I to decide in the next couple of days. But I'm still, like I said, I feel really good still with all those miles. So. Well, Adrian, congratulations. We'll let you enjoy this one. We look forward to seeing you at Nationals next month. Thank you so much. Notre Dame, for the third time in four years, they are your defending champions. The Fighting Irish with 32 points. Syracuse sitting second, followed by Wake Forest, North Carolina, and at Florida State. But again, just the lopsided nature to the men's title like we saw from North Carolina State. And the women, the Fighting Irish, take care of business with the 32 points. Sean Carlson guiding the Notre Dame program. One of two ranked teams coming in to these ACCs. Notre Dame ranked number eight, uh, winning their third title. And you know what? makes it probably extra special. This is the first time Notre Dame has hosted the ACC Cross Country Championships, and in the very first try, they bring home an ACC title. Head coach Sean Carlson joins us, and first off, coach, a winning bunch of fighting Irish runners. This is getting to be a norm for Notre Dame, your third title. How is this year different from last year for you? Yeah, every year is different. You know, this is the start of a new year. We, we came off of a great year last year, but, um, you know, we're always kind of trying to improve as a program and uh this is a great start to the season sean norm ogilvy you certainly uh have improved as a program great job for you guys uh what, what was the key today to your victory you know the key was was all of our boys knowing what they're running for and that's each other um i think we did a really good job of that we found each other out there and you know when things got tough everybody fought through it you know you, you know, we were really deep today and and uh that Deep teams show uh, commitment to each other. And that commitment certainly came forward today. You look at the effort of Dylan Jacobs and Kilray and, of course, Yard and Nagoose. Talk about what you're expecting from Yard, everybody watching him, his first real competitive action since the injury before the Olympics. Grade him out from what you saw today. Yeah, that was, that was a great rust buster for him. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see what the next couple of races uh, will hold. I think we can have a really really strong pack at the front of the national meet. Well, you certainly race like a champion today. Enjoy it here on your home course at the Burt Golf Course. Congratulations. Go Irish. Sean Carlson and Notre Dame for the third time in four years. They are your champions of the ACC Cross Country Championship. So that is the story from South Bend. For Norm Ogilvie and our entire crew, I'm Sean Kinney, and we congratulate the student athletes who competed today here at Notre Dame. North Carolina State, your women's champion, Kelsey Camille Lacrosse for the Wolfpack. Veldsku for Florida State. The Knowles, your individual champ.
Now it is time for the presentation of the Women's All-Conference Awards. And here to present the awards is ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips. Finishing in 21st place with a time of 20 minutes, 50.8 seconds, from Syracuse, Annie Booms. In 20th place, finishing in a time of 20, 49.7 seconds, from North Carolina, Sasha Meglia. In 19th place, running a time of 20, well 46.6 seconds, from North Carolina, Kelsey Harrington. <laughs> Finishing in 18th place, running a time of 20 minutes, 46.6 seconds, from Boston College, Anna Ozer. In 17th place, running a time of 20 minutes, 46.3 seconds, from NC State, Heather Holt. In 16th place, running a time of 20 minutes, 46.2 seconds, from Duke, Charlotte Tompkinson. In 15th place, running a time of 20 minutes, 46.0 seconds, from Virginia Tech, Lindsey Butler. In 14th place, running a time of 20 minutes, 25.1 seconds, from Duke, Michaela Reinhardt. In 13th place, running a time of 20 minutes, 44.8 seconds, from Florida State, Marty Skyring. In 12th place, running a time of 20 minutes, 30 seconds, 30.8 seconds, from Notre Dame, Olivia Markisich. In 11th place, running a time of 20 minutes, 40.8 seconds, from Florida State, Lauren Ryan. And in 10th place, running a time of 20 minutes, 30 seconds, 37.6 seconds, from North Carolina, Paige Hofstad. In 9th place, running a time of 20 minutes, 33.2 seconds, from Notre Dame, Maddie Denner. In 8th place, running a time of 20 minutes, 32.2 seconds, from NC State, Samantha Bush. There she is. And in 7th place, running a time of 20 minutes, 30.8 seconds, from Georgia Tech, Nicole Beagans. In 6th place, running a time of 20 minutes, 29.1 seconds, from North Carolina, Bryn Brown. And in 5th place, running a time of 20 minutes, 22.5 seconds, from NC State, 
Alexandra Hayes. In fourth place, running a time of 20 minutes, 19.9 seconds, from NC State, Hannah Steelman. And coming in third place, running a time of 20 minutes, 12.7 seconds, from Syracuse, Amanda Vestry. And your 2021 Atlantic Coast Conference runner up, running a time of 20 minutes, 9.9 .9 seconds, coming in second place from NC State, Caitlin Two. And ladies and gentlemen, your 2021 ACC Cross Country Champion, running a time of 20 minutes, 2.7 seconds, from NC State, Kelsey Shamil. Gentlemen, your 2021 ACC Freshman of the Year, running a time of 20 minutes, 29.1 seconds, from North Carolina, Brynn Brown! It is now time to honor the members of the 2021 Atlantic Coast Conference Women's Championship Team from the NC State Wolfpack. Please come forward when your name is pronounced. <laughs> the Wolfpack is coached by Larry Hennes. All right, the members of the championship team, Samantha Bush. Please step forward to accept your award. Kelsey Shamil. Dominique Claremont. Allie Hayes. Heather Holt. Mariah Howlett. Nevada Moreno. Savannah Shaw. Hannah Steelman. Caitlin Tui. 
is presented to your 2021 ACC Women's Cross Country Champions, the Wolfpack of NC State. Congratulations to Coach Lori Hennes and her team. time for the presentation of the Men's All-Conference Awards. Finishing in 21st place, running a time of 24 minutes, 16.5 seconds, from Duke, Josh Romine. Finishing in 20th place, running a time of 24 minutes, 14.8 seconds, from NC State, J.P. Flavin. Finishing in 19th place with a time of 24 minutes, 10.2 seconds, from Notre Dame, Anthony Russo. In 18th place, running a time of 24 minutes, 9.5 seconds, from Wake Forest, Aaron Lasseras. In 17th place, running a time of 24 minutes, 5.6 seconds, from NC State, Gavin Gaynor. And finishing in 16th place, running a time of 24 minutes, 4.2 seconds from Notre Dame, Jake Winfrey. <laughs> finishing in 15th place, running a time of 23 minutes, 58.4 seconds from Notre Dame, Andrew Alexander. <laughs> Finishing in 14th place, running a time of 23 minutes, 58.1 seconds, from Syracuse, J.P. Trojan. In 13th place, running a time of 23 minutes, 56.9 seconds, from Virginia, Rohan Aspa. In 12th place, running a time of 23 minutes, 56.7 seconds, from Syracuse, Aiden Tucker. In 11th place, running a time of 23 minutes, 56.4 seconds, from Notre Dame, Matthew Comodi. Good job. 
in 10th place, running a time of 23 minutes, 55.6 seconds, from Notre Dame, Joshua Metner. In ninth place, running a time of 23 minutes, 53.7 seconds, from North Carolina, Jack Aho. In eighth place, running a time of 23 minutes, 53.0 seconds, from Syracuse, Joe Dragon. Finishing in seventh place, running a time of 23 minutes, 45.7 seconds, from North Carolina, Parker Wolf. Good job, man. Well done. In sixth place, we're in a time of 23 minutes, 44.9 seconds from Wake Forest, Zach Faccioli. In fifth place, running a time of 23 minutes, 38.3 seconds from Notre Dame, Yared Nagus. In fourth place, running a time of 23 minutes, 32.6 seconds from Notre Dame, Danny Kilray. In third place, running a time of 23 minutes, 24.0 seconds from Florida State, Ahmed Mohammed. And your 2021 ACC runner-up, running a time of 23 minutes, 23.0 seconds from Notre Dame, Dylan Jacobs. <laughs> <laughs> and your 2021 ACC Cross Country Individual Champion, running a time of 23 minutes, 7.0 seconds, from Florida State, Adrian Wildstar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your 2021 ACC Freshman of the Year, running a time of 23 minutes, 45.7 seconds, from North Carolina, Parker Wolf. It is now time to meet the members of the 2021 ACC Championship team, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish are coached by Sean Carlson. 
why not? The members of this team, Andrew Alexander, Matthew Carmody, Ravi Kozian, Dylan Jacobs, Daniel Kilray, Josh Metner, Yared Nadeus, Anthony Russo, Jake Renfrew, and Carter Solomon. The championship trophy once again is presented by ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips. And now, the championship trophy is presented to your 2021 ACC men's cross-country champions, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Congratulations to Coach Sean Carlson and his team. Thank you. 